We've been having problems with it all week, huh? That's the time. Okay, we are. Okay, all praise to the most high. All right. Come here. Can you turn this? Can you turn this? Can you click this? Yep. All right, we up and ready to go. All praise to the most high. All right. Title of today's lesson. I know the blasphemy. I know the blasphemy. So let's go to Revelations real quick. This is one when you come into the truth. This is the, one of the first ones you grab hold to right here. Revelations 2 and 9. <laughs> That's one of the first ones right there. That's a go-to scripture when you come into the truth. Revelations God. 2 and 9. This is the book of Revelations chapter 2, verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them, which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. But they are the synagogue of Satan. Now, throughout the scriptures, we read that there are a certain nation of people that the Bible calls blasphemous. However, all of mankind can somehow become blasphemous or can blaspheme. We can, we can dip into blasphemy, but not all of mankind within our various nations are called a blasphemous, blasphemous nation. This is a, it can be, brothers and sisters, a learned behavior for most of us. But indeed, for those that are uh, called blasphemous, this is their a very real nature of theirs. This is this is uh, who they are. A blasphemous people by nature. Let's go to Revelations twelve now. Let's go to Revelations twelve. Revelations twelve. We're gonna begin at verse one, and we're gonna just read on down. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. And upon oh, page got stuck. And upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. And upon this woman's head, a crown of 12 stars stars symbolizing the nation of Israel. Born this woman, a crown of 12 stars symbolizing the nation of Israel. Verse 2. Can you turn your volume up, brother? Verse 2. Can I be heard? Yeah, you kind of low, though. Can you turn your volume up? So I put the highest. Well, I'll tell you this. It must be these cheap phones or something. I don't know. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 2. And she being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And pain, and she, this woman with the 12 crowns, being with child, travailed, and pain to be delivered. So let's go see who this woman, the woman is. First of all, let's go to Jeremiah 2 and uh, 6 and 2. Just to prove my point about this woman being the, the, uh, the uh, being Israel. Jeremiah 6 and 2. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 6, verse 2. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. He have likened the daughter, the, the daughter of Zion to a comely and, and delicate woman. Let's go back to Revelations. Revelations 12, chapter 12. Now, this woman through great pains and adversity down through 42 generations later, the Messiah being born, born through the nation of Israel. The Messiah being born through the nation of Israel. Verse 3. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 12, verse 3. Uh -huh. And there appeared another woman in heaven. 
that this another read it again out. And there appeared another woman in heaven. Another wonder. Another slide, an, another slide. wonder. Slide. Read it again. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. All right. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Now, what is a wonder? A wonder is a miracle. It's a, all, uh, it's a spectacle. You know, saying it's something that you see that's uh, the supernatural. First, he seen uh, uh, the prophet, the apostle John seen a woman with uh, 12 stars representing the children of Israel. Then he sees a great red dragon. And this, this is another wonder that he said, sees because he's all struck behind the visions that he's seen, right? Read it again, verse three. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and 10 horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And seven crowns upon his head. Now, we're gonna take the continent of Europe. We'll take Europe, right? Europe can be can be divided into seven geographical regions. Seven geographical regions. And there has been seven, seven major kingdoms to rule within the nation of Edom. Edom has completely took over Europe. They were not originally from Europe, but they took over those lands completely, right? So we're going to go through the seven regions. I'm just going to speak on them. I won't go through, break it down each one. I'm just going to speak on the seven regions or the seven parts of this great red dragon that was taken, that was taken over these lands that was taken over. All right. Number one, the first part is Scandinavia. Scandinavia. If you, if you are in uh, the chat, if you are in the chat, it'll probably be listed in the chat because I'm going go through a lot of different countries. Number one is Scandinavia. Scandinavia, Scandinavia encompasses Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Denmark. That's number one. Number two. Number two, the British Isles. The British Isles is the United Kingdom in Ireland. These are the seven parts to the bottomless pit. That's what we're going over. Number three, Western Europe, France, Belgium, uh, the Netherlands, Luxembourg, and Monaco. Number, number four, South Europe, Portugal, Spain, Andorra, Italy, Malta, uh, Malta San Marino, the Vatican City. Number five, which is Central Europe. Uh, Germany, Switzerland, Let Liechtenstein, Austria, Poland, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, and Hungary. Number six, the Southeastern Europe. Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia, Herzeg Herzegovina. Ser Siberia, Mont uh, Montenegro, Albania, Macedonia, Romania, B Bulgaria, Greece, the European part of Northern Turkey. And number seven is Eastern Europe, Estonia, Lat La uh, Latvia, Latvia, uh, uh, Ukraine, uh, Belarus, Moldova, the European portion of Russia, and the Trans-Caucasian uh, um, uh, uh, contributions of Georgia, Armenia, and so on and so forth. This is the, the Caucasus Mountains area, right? So later as we go forward, we'll talk about the seven governments and the, ruling, and the rulership of the bottomless pit, but we won't go into that now. We'll talk about it a little as we go forward. Let's go to verse three. I just wanted you to get in your mind, place in your mind these seven parts to the bottomless pit. All right, let's 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 go on to verse four. 
12 and 4. Revelations 12 and 4. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 12, verse 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman. Which the, was ready the dragon stood death. before the woman with the 12, with the 12 crowned uh, stars on her head. Go on. Or to devour her child as mm -hmm. soon as he was born. As, she, as soon as she was. Now that third part, as some of you may know, that third part was the southern kingdom of Israel. That's Judah, Benjamin, Levi. That was the southern kingdom of Israel. That third part was drawn away during the uh, transatlantic slave trade. That third part was drawn away during the uh, transatlantic slave trade. All right. Now, the second part to this verse is symbolism or metaphor for Herod. Everybody know who Herod is, right? Everybody know who Herod is? Edomite, Herod, Edomite Herod is the, the he's a he's a Edomite king of Judea, the Edomite king of Judea who tried to put the Messiah to death, right? So those forty and two generations came later, Messiah came, then Herod was in power. Herod tried to as soon as as soon as he be born, like the scripture says in verse four, as soon as he was born, he tried to put him to death. Verse five. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 5. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. Mm -hmm. And her child, her child was caught up unto Yah and to his throne. The, the Messiah was killed and caught and ascended to heaven. The Messiah was killed and he ascended to heaven. Read on. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of Yah, that they should feed her. There are thousand, two hundred, and three score days. So, so when did this woman, this woman with the 12 crowns, when did she flee? And how did she flee? Hold that. Let's go to Luke, the 21st chapter. Luke 21 and 21. This is when she fled. That woman fled. This is the Luke book of 21 Luke. and 21. This is the book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 21. Uh -huh. Let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Come on. And let, not, and let not them that are in the countries enter therein. Don't, don't go back into the country because we were under Roman assault. So we fled deeper into the interiors of Africa. Deeper into the interiors of Africa, we was under assault. Let's go back to Revelations. Revelations 12. Revelations 12, seven. This is the book of Revelations chapter 12, verse seven. And there was war in heaven. Mm -hmm. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought against, fought and his angels. Uh -huh. Keep going. Keep going. And prevailed not, neither was there place found any more in heaven. And we don't, we're gonna go down to we're gonna go down to verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come no, salvation. You skip verse 9. I want verse 9 too. You skip verse 9. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. Mm -hmm. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Esau and his armies. Esau and his armies was cast out. Come on. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our father and the power of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our father day and night. All right, now let's go to Revelation, the 13th chapter. 
Y'all bear with me now. Let's go to Revelation 13. Revelation 13. And we're gonna we're gonna start at uh verse one. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 13, verse 1. Come on. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Now, who is this? We see this, we see this beast. In 13, he's being called the beast. What was he called in, in 12? What was he called in 12? Dragon. The dragon, the great red dragon. The great red dragon. He was called a great red dragon in 12. He's called a beast in 13. Come on. And upon his horns, 10 crowns. And upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. The name blasphemy. So every last one of the rulers who ruled with these, with these uh, seven crowns and these lands and these 10 horns, all of them was of the same people and all of them the Bible calls blasphemous. All of them the, the Bible calls blasphemous. Let's go to Hebrews. Hold that. We're going to come back to 13. Let's go to Hebrews 12 and 16. Those that are called blasphemous, they take on a certain nature. They take on a certain nature. Hebrews 12, 16. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright, for ye know. Is that it? Yeah, that was the, just 16 that was it? Yeah. Okay, good. Good. So this this is the nature of a blas of the blasphemous person. He is pro he is a fornicator and he is and he is profane. He is profane. All right, let's go back to Revelation 13. Revelation 13. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 11. Salaki, chapter 13, verse 2. Verse 2. And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear. All right, stop that. Go back to, uh, drop that. Go back to uh, verse 1. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 1. I want to explain something. Go ahead. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, uh -huh. having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns. All right, let's explain what that is, these seven heads. Those seven heads are uh, Great Britain, Russia, Germany, France, Rome, Italy. Spain, Greece. Those seven heads are Great Britain, Russia, Germany, France, Rome, Italy, Spain, and Greece. Those are the seven heads. Those are the seven heads. Now, those ten horns are the ten common markets better known as NATO. Those 10 horns are the 10 common markets better known as NATO. In 1949, there were 10 countries that were created, that had created an alliance pushed by America and pushed by Great Britain. So Great Britain and America push this agenda together. They push this agenda together, right? In 1949, these countries that created the alliance were as follows. Belgium, Canada, Denmark, France, Iceland, 
Italy, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Norway, Spain. I'll read them again. In 1949, there were 10 countries that created an alliance. This is your NATO today. This is your NATO today. This is how it started. And this is how it will end. Y'all listening? This is how it started, and this is how it will end. In 1949, 10 countries were created, a created alliance. It's Belgium, Canada, Denmark, France, Iceland, Italy, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Norway, Spain, the United Kingdom, and the United States States are the two that came into agreement and pushed the G, uh, agenda of NATO. Let's go to Daniel now. Let's go to the book of Daniel, chapter 7. We want verses 7 and 8. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 7. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly. He had great iron teeth. It devoured and broke in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was, and it was, diverse, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. And this beast had ten horns. Verse 8. Verse 8. I considered the horns. And behold, there came up among them another little horn. Out of these ten horns came up another little horn. Come on. Before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. Now, before the little horn showed up, came up, into into power there was three little horns that was in pop that was uh in power there was three other horns in, in power did anybody know what brother Dan what brother daniel was talking about who was this little horn and who was the three horns before he came up into into power who y'all think it is anybody want to guess it anybody want who y'all think what, who was that little horn it's the United States. The United States. There we go. The little horn is the United States. Who was the three horns that was plucked up by the roots? It's history. This is a his I know it's a history lesson. I know. This is least. This is uh, Great Britain. Mm -hmm. And uh, if America is the little horn, who was the three horns that was plucked up? Who did the who did uh, America usurp in this country. In this country. Think about what I'm saying. In this country. In this land. France. 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 Britain. Uh -huh. Spain. 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 Those are the, those are the three horns that was packed, uh, plucked up by the root. Come on. First, first eight, brother. Read on. <clears throat> I considered the horns. Behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. Come on. Oh, and this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. This this more this little horn is America. The three horns he overflew was Great Britain, France, and Spain. He overthrew Great Britain in seventeen fifteen to seventeen eighty three. He overthrew. Uh, did I say France or Great Britain? Which one did I say? I meant Great Britain. France and Spain. Right, Great Britain, France and Spain. Great Britain was uh, 1715 to 17 over oh, 83. America overthrew. France, uh, uh, which the French and Indian War began in 1754, uh, they overthrew. Uh, the Spanish uh, American War, on, uh, April 21st, 1898. To, uh, to December uh, 1898, they overthrew. 
that took over this land. This is the little horn. Why the little? Why is it called the little horn? It's the younger, youngest of all these nations. America, America is a very, very young empire. You don't believe America is, a, is an empire? What do they call? What do they call New York? Empire State. The Empire State. It's the state within the empire. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go back to Revelations. Let's go back to Revelations. The book of Revelations. Verse, verse 2. 13, 13 and 2. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 13, verse 2. And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear. And his mouth is the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. His, the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. If you wonder why the white man got so much power in the earth, have you ever wondered that? Because he ain't stronger than us. He ain't smarter than us. Well, how did he get to overcome and overthrow us? Somebody gave him some power and some, and some authority in the earth, right? Because when you look at it, you can you, it's mind-boggling. It's mind-boggling how frail and weak they are. Yeah, I said it, and if you check me down, that's cool. It's mind-boggling. <laughs> you know how how uh how the density of their bones, how, how weak and fragile that they are, right? We see it. It's mind-boggling. How did they overcome us? Somebody, the dragon, gave them some power, right? They bowed down to something. Hmm. Leopard don't change his stripes. Or is it a leopard or? Yeah, yeah, spots. Yeah, this is right? A tiger, a tiger got striped or something. One of them got striped. <laughs> How did this man become as powerful as he has in the earth? How he can't outrun us, he can't outthrow us. Hand to hand combat is over. Something gave him the ability to overcome us. Right? Let's see, because Yahweh, you, you know Yahweh Shah was offered the same deal. Mm -hmm. Yahweh Shah was offered the same deal that this Joker got. Let's see. Let's go to Luke 4. Let's go to Luke 4, verses 5 and 6. This is the book of Luke. Shout out Captain to Captain Maccabees. Luke 4, 5 and 6. <laughs> Chapter 4, verse 5. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in mm -hmm. a moment of time. In a what? In a moment of time. In a moment of time, he showed him. He showed him all the kingdoms of the, of the world, what, what was going on in, in his timeline and what would be going on in the future. In a moment of time, he showed him everything. This is what this is what's going to happen. Come on. And the devil said unto him, come on, all this power will I give thee. Come on. And the glory of them. And the glory of them. I'll give you the power. And the glory. Come on. For that is delivered unto me. Mm -hmm. And whosoever I will, I give it. Go back, because I miss I missed something. We can barely hear you. I, I missed something. Go back. Go back on verse five. This is the book of Luke, chapter four, verse five. Come on. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain. Come on. Show me showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world mm -hmm. in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee 
and the glory of them. Mm -hmm. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. I'll give you this power. I'll give you this glory. So what makes you think he didn't offer the same deal to Esau? Mm -hmm. When they came back during the Renaissance, that's what it means. The Renaissance means rebirth. They came back into the earth. But somebody somewhere, one of them popes, was, they, they said, we'll bow down. Just give it all to us. Why you think this? Why you think this man came back like this? What they say in uh, y'all remember the movie Minister Society or or, or y'all too young for that? Y'all remember the movie Minister Society? He said, "I didn't know he was gonna come back like that." Last, <laughs> <laughs> he came back blast. He saw during the Renaissance era, he came back. Blast. He ran rough shot over everything. With the, uh, listen, and we fell like dominoes, too. It's just like the scripture says, the most high gave us a, a failing heart. Like a, like a shaking leaf. Ain't nobody even there. Oh, here goes Esau. Ain't nobody even there. Gave us a heart of fear. He ran right over us. Can't whoop us. So how? How did how did this blasphemous human being that we can call him human being? Can you call him a human being? He has no hue. How did this blasphemous thing thing, I should say, how did he overcome the kings of the earth? He did something we didn't do. He obeyed his God. Mm. And we did not. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Esau obeyed his God. He said, all that you say, great red dragon, I'll do. I look just like you. I'm red like you. Of course I'll do whatever you say. Yes. <laughs> Romans 13, uh, Revelations 13 and 3. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 13, verse 3. Mm hmm and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. All the world wondered after the beast. Who was the wound? Who was the beast that was that was wounded to death? Who was that? Who was that? What in what kingdom was he what, what that came back and strengthened power? Because the brother said it earlier. Rome. Rome, remember, Rome fell in 193 AD. Who took Rome down? The Israelites. The but what so was the general's Rome. name? Septimius uh, III. He, <laughs> he took he took Rome down in 193 AD. The Roman, the 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 black Jew, Septimius Serenius, took Rome down in 193 AD. They were struggling to come back, and they completely fell in 46 AD. And then in 1453, with the fall of Constantinople, that wound was healed. They had been fighting this the whole time, little short scrimmages, but we was overcoming them, overcoming them, overcoming them, overcoming them. And then all of a sudden, in 1453, with the fall of Constantinople, they run rough shot. It was over. They cleaned out the hall of, of Europe. They cleaned us out of that situation. Y'all didn't know we ran Europe. We was there too. Then Putin, that might not believe me. Go back and ask Putin. <laughs> Putin to tell you. 
<laughs> Putin opened up the doors and said, everybody said, who is these black people? These on these walls right here. <laughs> <laughs> That's the people that ran to Russia before you got there. You come up out of the Caucasus mountains and ran us out of there. Put us in derision. They came back. Let's get Malachi one and four. Malachi, uh, let's get Malachi. Let's start at verse one. I want all four verses. Malachi chapter one, one through four. This is the book of Malachi chapter one, verse one. Mm -hmm. The burden of the word of Yahweh to Israel by Malachi. Mm -hmm. I have loved you, say of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ye say, wherein has thou loved us? Was, on. Not, was not Esau Jacob's brother? Mm -hmm. Say of Yahweh? Yet I love Jacob. Yeah, the most high asked the question. When Jacob Esau his brother, what you mean when I didn't love you? Yeah, just because you went through slavery, just because you went through what you went through because of your own disobedience. What you mean I didn't love you? Wasn't Esau your brother? Wasn't that your brother? Come on. <clears throat> this is the book of Malachi, chapter 1, verse 3. Read. And I hated Esau. So when people say, God love everybody, take them straight here. Um, That's not true. God don't love everybody. God don't love everybody. Some people, he don't give a D A M. In about, I want I want that to get on TikTok so I ain't so I ain't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I want that part right there to get on TikTok. <laughs> he don't care about folks on uh, the majority of people on Earth. People don't people don't like him to say it, but the majority of people on Earth, the Most High, don't care about. I, that's not my thinking. That's what the Bible says. Can we get it? Can we get Isaiah 40? Let's start at verse 15, Isaiah 40. For most people on the earth, he cares nothing about. Truly, that's he leave that up to you. That's up to you and I. They're our responsibility. That's why we're the kings and the priests. I left that up to you. I ain't got nothing to do with that. I don't talk to them. I talk to you. And then you talk to them. <laughs> this is the book of Isaiah chapter 40, 40 and 15. verse 15 behold the nations are as a drop of a bucket mm -hmm. and are counted as the small dust of the balance do you, the, a balance is a scale it's a wing scale the dust do you measure the dust that's on a, on a scale you don't care nothing about the dust that's on the scale, do you? Because <laughs> that don't care. That don't carry no weight to you. You don't care, right? The nation is as a drop in a bucket. If you got a five-gallon bucket of water, do you care about one drop that spilled out of that bucket? You don't care. So all of the nations together, collectively together, I don't care where you're from, collect all of y'all up together and put y'all in one bucket. Well, I don't care nothing about y'all. You could be that one little drop. That one little drop. That's you. That whole nation. All them nations. All 18 of them, all 17 of them nations. That's you. That one drop. I care nothing about you. I only, but I love Israel. That's who I love. That's my the apple of my eye. That's the ones I want. Have you ever been in love when you was a kid? I'm saying when you was a kid, because there shouldn't be no grown people here just going through that. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> Have you been in love when you was a kid and, the, and it may not have been reciprocated? You know what I'm saying? The other person, they didn't feel about you the way you felt about them. And you just starry-eyed. You can't eat. Your stomach hurt. You got your love sick. <laughs> <laughs> you love sick. <laughs> it ain't reciprocated. That's how the most high is about us. He loves sick about us. He said they don't Love me back the same way I love them. 
I give everything to him. Give him literally give him the world. <laughs> literally give them the world. And if the love is not reciprocated, they don't love me back the same way I love them. So the most high is love sick about you. Why won't they do what I say? Why won't they do? Why won't they obey me? Why won't they? Don't they love me back? Because think about it. When you think about it in terms like that, it makes you think, don't it? Like, hey. Mm. Why won't they, why won't they why won't why is it this love reciprocated? Why won't they love me back as much as I love them? I made after all, I made the world for them. They don't want the world. They want the other nations. They want the rulership of the other nations. Some people are satisfied with how things are. They're satisfied with being a slave. I've heard people say, I don't want to be around no niggas. Have you ever heard people say that? Yeah. Now, I understand the evilness of some of our people you don't want to deal with. Because it's just evil. Any evil person, any evil person, no matter who they is, what they say, I don't want to be around. But you got folks that rather be with them other folks than be with their own people. And talk crazy about their own people, too. Yeah. I'm going to give me a white guy so he can, I can rub gas curly. Curly hair. Y'all ain't seen the, what is it, the black woman effect? Or what is it? The black wife effect or something like that? Y'all haven't seen that? It's a new craze going around the black white. The white men are going around marrying black women. Oh, and it's a new, it's a trend. It's like a trend like. Yeah. Don't let don't be fooled by that. Their numbers are low. They can't reproduce. <laughs> they look at the white folks look at the future. They look at the future. Saying, these people, it was just like that in Egypt. Remember that? We was in Egypt. They said, man, these Israelites is green. And we, they, they women just have babies. After baby, after baby. So we got to come in here. We got to put this abortion on deck. We got to put this morning after on deck. We got to, and we got to put, and we got to put these white men in full effect to marry up them sisters. You know, that's what's going on. Trust and believe. What verses we at? I'm sorry. I ain't got all of them. Well, let me finish the, uh, the verse. Verse 15. three. You want me to finish verse 15? Yeah, I want uh, Malachi 1 and 3 through 4. Okay. Yeah. Malachi. Oh, I'm sorry. We was in Isaiah, wasn't we? Yeah, yeah let's yeah, finish Isaiah. that up. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Isaiah 40 and 15. And okay, yeah. six, I want through 17, I believe. I'm not Hold looking on. at it. That's why I said that. Hold on one second. Okay. Uh, verse 40, chapter 40, verse 15. I'm going to just read the verse over again. Okay. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket mm -hmm. and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Mm -hmm. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. Mm -hmm. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. Come on. All nations before him are as nothing. All nations before him are as nothing. Nothing. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. Come on. And they are counted to him less than nothing. <laughs> Read. And, and vanity. And vanity. Can you believe now? You can. I'm not. I'm not saying this. This is the word of the Most High. If you don't you have a problem with it, then argue with the Most High. He said, "All the rest, all these nations are less. Than, how could you be less than nothing?" <laughs> it, so in his mind, they don't even exist. If you, I want y'all to really kind of like understand his. This is his mind. 
they don't exist. If you're less than nothing, that means you don't even exist to him. The only people he's looking at is the children of Israel. That's it. That's it. You're less than nothing. In his book, I leave you to deal with that, what I created. That's why I created you. I created the children of Israel to deal with the blasphemy that I created. That's on you. That ain't on me. I give it to you and you give it to them. Let's go back to Revelations. Did you want me to read Malachi 1 and 4? Yeah, Malachi 1 and 4. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you, D. 1 and 4. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 1, verse 4. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, they should build, but I will throw down. Mm -hmm. And they shall call them mm -hmm. the of wickedness mm -hmm. and the people against whom Yahweh have indignation forever. His indignation being his wrath, his anger, his continuous anger and his wrath. And he didn't say until he gets, you know, tired or until, uh, until the appointed time. He said forever, forever, ever, ever and ever and ever. Let's go back to Revelations. This is the book of Revelations. Chapter 13, verse 4. Mm -hmm. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. Come on. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto this beast? Come on. Who is able to make war with him? That's how it came back. That's how he, he stepped into his blessing. Did y'all know he saw had a blessing? Didn't he get a blessing? God. Did not Father Isaac give him a blessing? God. He stepped. He stepped right into it. Who can make war with him? Let's get uh. Know what we read on? I won't even go into it. I won't even go into it. <clears throat> Let's read on verse five. Book of Revelations, chapter thirteen, verse five. Uh -huh. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. There was given him a mouth. He, he was able to make war. And he began to have a mouth that spoke great blasphemies. What are those blasphemies? We read it at the beginning of this lesson. What are those blasphemies? What's the blasphemous things talk he began to say? After he came into power, what's, what thing he began to say? It's the first, one of the first things we learn when we come into the truth. First is what? That's one. That's one. But what are we? Well, who are we talking about when we went to Revelations 2 and 9? I just gave you the answer, though. The fuck fake Jews. The who? Fake Jews. The fake Jews. This is this is this is the blasphemy that is coming out of Esau's mouth. You have a certain set of these uh, Edomites that say that they are the people of God. Or maybe they are the people of God, but they're certainly not the people of the Most High God. So you have a certain group of Edomites that say that they are the children of Israel. This is blasphemous, blasphemous talk. You have the, the rest of the uh, children of Esau that supports their efforts. So anytime you and I come across and we say, I'm the, I'm the, I'm a son of Israel. I'm the son of Jacob. They say, not this nigga. <laughs> what are you crazy? It's unbelievable. It sounds ridiculous. When I say it, because can't no Negro. The example's nice. I said Negro. 
Change? No. No, no. Look at you. Look at your people. You couldn't possibly think that you're a nation of kings and priests. No. Y'all broke, busted, and disgusted. You ain't got no money. Y'all don't own nothing. Y'all ain't got no land. But we are rich. <laughs> Say it again. But we are rich. But we are rich because we are the rightful executors of his commandments. Uh huh. And we often teach how we can only go through the how it's shy to get to the kingdom, but the rest of the nations, they can only get to the most high through us. You need an Israelite teacher. That's right. Not now, though. Nope. I ain't teaching you now. I'm going to teach you in the kingdom. I'm going to teach the nations when I get to the kingdom. Right now, I got too many Israelite brothers and sisters of lost. Israel first, not you. That's right. We got to come back into our kingdom, become the rightful executives of this, this truth. And then the other nations, when we get into the kingdom, then they're going to come and worship. But before that, <laughs> all I got for you is get ready for sleep. That's all I got. That's all I got for you. And when, and when they get in the kingdom and, and they're going to worship, they're going to still be slaves because you make your slaves worship what, what you worship. Right? 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 You make your slaves worship what you worship. We just not unrighteous people. We just not going to be butt breaking and right. doing all that kind of stuff. That kind of nasty, filthy behavior that they did to us. We won't be doing that, but we certainly going to get a chance to beat some of them. And I'm there for that. I'm there for that. I'm there for that. Beat them down. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to whoop me some slaves. Get them down. I'm going to do it for the culture. I'm going to whoop me some slaves. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they gonna, That's right. They're going to they get them right. right. And every one of my slaves is going to be called Toby. All of them. <laughs> every last one. Every last one. I don't care if it's male or female. Female, she's going to be Toby too. That's right. You can't beat the can't beat the color out of them. They won't have no color. Most of them won't. Some of them gonna be colored. That's right. Beat the I'm gonna beat the white off of them. So called white. That's right. I said it. I said it. Show just a little bit of mercy. That's all. A little bit of mercy. Not a thousand lashes, nine hundred and ninety-eight lashes. All right, let's go to verse five. Verse five. This is the book of Revelations, chapter thirteen, verse five. And there was given, and there was given to him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. All right, let's deal with this. Let's go to Daniel. I got to hurry up. We're running, we time is running. Let's get to Daniel uh, 7 and 25. I still didn't get to uh, Revelation 17 yet. I got to get to Revelation 17. This Daniel 7, 25. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. Mm -hmm. And she wear out the saints of the Most he High. He did wear us out in slavery. Come on. And think at Salaki. And think to change times and laws. Come on. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of times. We're going to be given into his hand for a time, time, dividing the times is 350 years. 350 years will be given into his hands. Come on. But the, oh, judgment, 
Hold on. Um, we're understanding the 350 year timeline. You understand the 350 year timeline? 16, uh, well, that's a lot. Yeah. 1619. Is that it? So to go, if you add up three, uh, 16, if you add up 350 years from 16, from 1619, what is, what is that? 19, 19, uh, somebody 19, broke off the calculator. I can't remember. 1619 plus 350 years. 1969. What is it? 1969. 1969. 1969 is when you begin to see, to see our people rise up. In the 60s. In the 60s, you just begin to see various messiahs rise up. J. Uh, J. Edgar Hoover said what? He said, we, we, we're about to see a black messiah. Anytime we're about to see a black. We got to squash this. What's going on? Because they're about to rise up. The, see, Esau know what's happening. That's going to begin to happen. You begin to see various brothers. You had the brothers that went to the morning in the 1960s. You had brothers that start raising up uh, ISBK. One was camps open up in the 1960s. You begin to see brothers start together in the 1960s. This was happening for 350 years. They held us in captivity. What else happened in the 1960s? What happened in 1965? In 1964, when was it? The, uh, um, the, uh, the, the hell, some significant, the Jim Crow laws was... Uh, oh, voters' somewhat, right. voters yeah, rights. Yeah, voters' rights. All this kind of stuff. They began to loosen. Esau began to loosen his grip upon us uh, 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 during that time, in the 1960s. He began to loosen his grip his tight grip began to loosen a bit. We began to get some room, you know. We started to see more black educators, more black people that were educated, right? We seen we seen all of this stuff that was happening during that time frame. Let's get Ezekiel thirty five right quick. Ezekiel thirty five. I'm trust me. I'm trying to hurry, y'all. <laughs> Ezekiel thirty five, and start at verse twelve. This is the book of. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 35, verse 12. And thou shalt know that I am Yahweh, and that I have heard all thy blasphemies, which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel, saying, They are laid desolate. They are given us to consume. That's what Esau said. That's what Amalek said. Hey, look, ain't nobody even over here. They said that in 1948. Look, it's laid desolate. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody there. Now, now it's been given to us to consume. We can go over there and take that thing now. Read on. Thus, with your mouth, ye have boasted against me and have multiplied your words against me. I have heard them. I've heard you, Esau. I heard your blaspheme. I heard you. Let's go to Revelation 17 and 1. We're going to come out of 13. Let's go to Revelation 17 and 1. Sorry if I'm moving a little fast. I'm going to speed it up a little bit, okay? Revelation 17 and 1. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore, that sitteth upon many waters. Now let's go to Isaiah 17 and 12. Isaiah 17, 12 through 14, brother. Book of Isaiah. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 17, verse what? Uh, verse 12. Verse 12, 12 through 14. Woe to the multitude of many people which make a noise like the noise of the seas and to the rushing of the nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. Like the rushing of mighty waters. So now we understand in Revelation 17 and 1 that that great horde that sitteth upon many waters is talking about people. Those waters are people that is being referred to. Read on. 
the nations shall rush like the rushing of many waters. Mm -hmm. but, but the Father shall rebuke them, and they shall flee far off, mm -hmm. and shall be chased as the chafe of the mountains before the wind. Mm -hmm. And like a rolling thing before the world wind. Read on. And behold, at evening tide, trouble. And before the morning, he is not. This is the portion of them that spoil us, and the lot of them that rob us. This is their portion. Their, this is their planned destruction by the Most High. High, those blasphemers, the Most High is going to put them in derision and has a planned destruction for them. Let's get, uh, let's get uh, Revelation seventeen and two. Mm. This is the book of this is the book of Revelation, chapter seventeen, verse two. Come on. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. With the wine of her fornication. This is idolatry, and this is, is in this is the worship of something other than the most high God. We don't own any of the banking systems, we don't own any of the entertainment systems, we don't own any of those things, but guess what our people do? Our people worship those things. Look at them in entertainment. They'll do anything, anything in the world for those Jews. Well, they're not those so-called white Jews, won't they? They'll do anything in the world for them. They'll give up anything. Some of them give up their mama's form. You know who you know who I believe is one of the most wickedest uh, women on the face of the planet? Jennifer Hudson. Mm -hmm. Can anybody name a record, the, the last record that Jennifer Hudson did? What's the last song she put out? Uh, what's the last movie she did? Anybody know? Was it Glow Girl? Was it Glow Girls or Sunshine Girls or whatever it was? Something like that. Yeah. How many years ago was that? Can anybody tell me why Jennifer Hudson has $300, $400 million? I was can anybody do anybody remember when Jennifer Hudson first left Chicago? The seven members of her family was put to death. Mm-hmm. Whole family. She sold them. That's one of the most evil women in the world. Mm-hmm. Why you got so much money, you don't do nothing. Mm -hmm. Right. Let's go back. Revelation 17 and 3. The book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, mm -hmm. full of names of blasphemy. Read it again. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. Uh -huh. Come on. And I saw. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. What color is scarlet? Red. 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 A red beast. The same beast we talked about in 13. The same beast we talked about in 12. The same beast that came out of the womb of a woman in Genesis 21. Or was it 25? One of them. That came out with us while we held on to his heel. That same red beast. That's what we're talking about. A nation of red people. Come on. Full of names of blasphemy. Come on. Having seven heads and ten horns. Having seven heads and ten horns. Operating out of ten, uh, seven uh, regional systems and having a conglomerate called NATO now today or the ten common markets today uh, rulership with, throughout the earth. All right. Blasphemy, right? Blasphemy literally, literally means to hurt or to injure or to damage or to defame one's reputation. Webster Dictionary defines the word as to speak of or address with ill reverence. <laughs> we generally think of the word blasphemy in terms as it relates to God. 
when some people, when somebody speaks in any way that could hurt, damage God's reputation. Blasphemy is something that is highly offensive to the Most High. Amongst other things, blasphemy certainly violates the third commandment, which instructs us not to take Yah's name in vain. The first time we hear of blasphemy was in Israel. Or it was while Israel was uh, taken in the wilderness. And here's the most highest judgment on blasphemy. Let's get Leviticus uh, 24 and 10. This is what the Most High wants. This is what the mind of the Most High or the judgment of the Most High for a blasphemous person. So this is what he thinks about the whole nation that he has called blasphemous. This is the judgment on them. Leviticus 24, 10 and 16. Uh, Leviticus 24, 10 through 16. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 24, verse 10. Through 16. And the son of an Isra Israelitish woman whose father was an Egyptian went out among the children of Israel. And this son of the Israelitish woman and a man of Israel strode together in the camp. And the Israelitish woman's son blasphemed the name of Yahweh and cursed. And they brought him unto Moses and his mother's name was Shalem, was Shalem, the daughter of Debri, of the tribe of Dan. And they put him in ward, that the mind of Yahweh might be showed them. They, they, put, they locked him up until they found out what the Most High, what Yahweh wanted to do about this situation. Come on. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Bring forth him that have cursed without the camp. And let all that heard him lay their hands upon his head. Now, everybody that heard what he said, let them lay their hands upon his head. Everybody that heard it was in the earshot of what this joker said. Let them all come and put their hands on his head. Come on. And let all the congregation stone him. And let what? <laughs> let all the congregation Stone him. Everybody that heard it, pick your brick up. You heard what he said. Pick the brick up and get busy. Come on. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Come on. Whosoever curses his Yah shall bear his sin. If you don't speak again, you're going to get it. You're going to bear that sin. You don't speak against God, you're going to bear that sin. And if you hear him speaking against God and you don't speak against it, you're going to bear that sin. Come on. And he that blasphemer the name of Yahweh, he shall surely be put to death. This is the name, this is the mind of Yah. This is the mind of Yah. <laughs> and we read throughout the scriptures, he already said that whole nation over there is blasphemous. So what do you think the judgment is? Death. That's the judgment. You blaspheme, you die. Come on. And all the congregation shall certainly stone him. As well, the stranger. And he that is born in the land. Come on. When he blasphemeth the name of Yahweh. She'll be put to death. No matter if you're Israelite born of the same land, Israelite is not born in that land and you happen to be in that land. No matter if you're not Israelite at all and you in that land, you got to get some work. You got to get that work. Stoning got to be one of the most horrible ways to go. <laughs> you get neck cranium cracked. And you might be having a nervous reaction. They say, look, he's still moving. Straight to the white meat. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, uh, bust it to the, you say bust it to the white meat and Straight then have the the, meat. and have and have some brain matter leaking, leaking out of it. All the way open. 
You see rows of his thoughts, rows of his thoughts. <laughs> On the desert floor. <laughs> The beast is utilized by America to push the world's agenda. They push the world agenda through trade agreements. They push the world agenda through their economic monopolies. They push the world's agenda by their dominance through war. They make policies to control their interests and maintain their power. And it has a negative effect on the children of Israel. We're almost done. Let's get Psalms 94. We're almost done. Psalms 94, verses 20 and 21. Verse 20 Psalms 94, verse 20 and 21. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 24. 94. Verse 94. Verse 94. Mm -hmm. Shall the throne of the iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law? They frame of the mischief by law, meaning their policy. They already know how is this going to negatively affect the children of Israel? And how is this going to positively affect us? They frame that mischief by law. Congress is working day and night heavily how to keep you and I in the in the constant state that we're in. No folk ain't working on your behalf. <laughs> <laughs> how can we keep them consumers? And that's it. <laughs> Come on. They gathered themselves together. Uh -huh. Yes, the soul of the righteous. Come on. And condemn the innocent blood. And condemn the innocent blood by making you a part of their rebellion against Yah. Then they indoctrinate us or they indoctrinate uh, society with their philosophies. They indoctrinate us with uh, laws such as uh, gay rights. Now they got a law that uh, they just was discussing a few months ago against the Bible. Did y'all hear that? It's supposed to be a Bible-based, quote-unquote, Christian country. They in the day in Congress just discussing how parts of the Bible they can get rid of, making that against the law. If you read it, you'll be uh, you could be con uh, convicted of anti-Semitism. Yeah, you can't say the Jews killed Christ or there's going to be a problem. You can't say that. You can't say that. Or it's going to be a problem. You can't say, Revel you can't use Revelations 2 and 9 any longer or it's going to be an issue. Y'all ain't heard that? Yes, yeah, that was in this parts of the Bible. They said we got to take that out because that's anti Semitism. <laughs> Just what we're doing today. We got to take that out. That's why the thing wouldn't work today. Y'all don't believe it? <laughs> that's why it wouldn't work. That's why it wouldn't work. Well, as soon as it came across, I know that I know that blasphemy came across. They knew where we was going. You think they don't know where we're going? They've been around listening long enough to know where we're going. They said, we're going to shut this all the way off as much as we can. Cut this off. I had a video to come up on TikTok, right? And I posted, I thought I was doing a little something. I put a little, added a little music to it, a little effects to it and stuff like that. I posted it on there. I said, oh, this is going to be good. I got on. I went back on there to look at it. You couldn't hear my voice at all. <laughs> Nothing but music. <laughs> they took me right out of there talking. They said, we ain't going to hear none of that. 
it don't go well with our, uh, it goes against our guidelines. What you're saying. All right. I got one more time to say we're almost done. Let's get revela uh, back to Revelation 17 and 4. One more time to, to, to say we're almost done. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color mm -hmm. and decked with gold and precious stone and mm -hmm. pearl, having a golden cup in her hand, one. full of abominations. And filled with what? Of abominations. Filled with abomination and blas blasphemies. Come on. And filthiness mm -hmm. of her fornication. Come on. And upon her head is slack. Was that it? Because I ain't that, looking at it. Was that it? That was the end of verse four. All right. America is Babylon. It is filled with confusion. Babylon or Babel derives from the Hebrew, Hebrew uh, meaning confusion. America's agencies like the FBI, CIA, and the Pentagon work hard to conceal its evil mysteries. They work hard through their media and their policies to keep the general public ignorant of America's abominable spirit, its blasphemous spirit. She is the mother of harlots, and because of uh, and she is the uh, the seducer of many many countries. Let's get Rebecca two and five. Rebecca 2 and 5. Rebecca 2 and 5. This is the book of Rebecca, chapter 2, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Yea, also, because he transgresseth by wine. Come on. He is a proud man. Mm -hmm. Neither keepeth at home. Come on. Who enlargeth his desire as hell. Mm hmm. And is his death and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. This is a, what they call this a melting pot society. He gathered to himself all peoples from all around the world, a melting pot society. Let's get Revelation 3 and 9. This is truly the world, the last scripture. It's truly the last one, I promise. <laughs> Revelation 3 and 9 Chapter 3 verse 9 Behold I will make them Of the synagogue of Satan uh -huh. Which say They are Jews Come on And are not Come on But do lie Three. Behold I will make them to come And worship before thy feet mm -hmm. And to know that I have loved thee. To know that I have loved thee, the true children of Israel. Have any of y'all ever seen these videos where Israelites are making uh, Edomites uh, get down and kiss their feet? Have anybody seen those videos? Y'all seen those videos? Y'all might as well stop doing that, brothers. Stop doing that. Makes no sense for an Edomite to get down and kiss your feet right now in this stage in the game, and you have to go right to work and work for them. That's not according to the scripture. The scripture says, I will make them come and worship. Not you. Not you. <laughs> the scripture says, I will make them come and worship. Ain't nothing like Ain't nothing like you standing there and y'all shy got him by the neck. Get out and worship, worship, get out and worship him like I said. Ain't nothing like that. I'll be standing out there. I'll be standing out there with my foot way out right there. Go on and lick them boots, Esau. Lick them boots. But it made no sense for me to get out there. We still in captivity. We still don't own no finances. We don't own nothing. But Esau going to get out there and lick my boot, get up, put on his tie, and still be my master at work. It doesn't make sense. I know it makes your heart feel good because you want to get at Esau. Some brothers do. They be so frustrated, so sick of this devil. They just want to do get back at him. 
Ain't this is how you get back at them. Keep these laws. This is how you get back at them. This is how you get back at them, brothers. This is how you do it. Keep these laws. Teach your brothers to keep these laws and let's get the kingdom. That's how you get back at them. And then when we get the kingdom, get down, cracker. Kiss these toes. Go in there and make my wife's tea. And take this whip. <laughs> yeah. I already got my slaves picked out. I do. Y'all never do that? I can pick my slaves out. Y'all ain't never heard of Larry Ellis? Larry Ellison? Oh, Larry the Ellison is the richest eater in, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the in the in uh, uh, America. He the richest Jew. You talking about, you talking about the brother? Uh, who? You talking about the brother? No, no, no. He's a he's a a so called white Jew. Oh, Larry Ellison. He got one uh a one hundred and two point nine billion dollars. That's the of mine. I want to come kiss my feet. I'm gonna keep him on my land barefooted too. No shoes that's on, slave pants right. on. That's what he's gonna have on with a rope tied on. <laughs> that's right. Mary Ellison, I'm coming for you. Michael Bloomberg. I got mine picked out. Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg. I want him. I'm on your channel and I want, I'm saying I want you. I'm on your what you own. I'm on Facebook and I'm saying I want you. To chop my Get wood. Him. I want you. Get him. That's right. All right, family. We're gonna leave it right there. Get up. We'll leave it right there. All right. For all of those who have a problem with what I said, I don't care. <laughs> And for those of you that love what I said, all praises to the most high. <laughs> all right. We look forward to seeing you next time. Y'all bless you. Have a smile upon you. Give me a shout out. Somebody said, Bill.